Good evening, welcome to the September 10th meeting of the Daniel Glen Area School District. If you could all please rise and pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> All right, folks, good evening. We're going to tackle our uh, special voting meeting agenda first. Um, Mr. Wolf, uh, roll call, please. Yes, Mr. Ratko. Ms. Albright. Mr. Miller. Mr. Durso. Present. Mr. Strobel. Here. Mr. B. Scott. Here. Mr. Wolf, here. Mr. J. Scott. Here. Ms. Olson? Here. Mr. Rafka? Here. Alrighty, public uh, procedures for public participation are located <coughs> on the inside cover of your agendas. Um, are there any agenda edits for our special voting meeting? Hearing none, are there any presentations by public on agenda items? Seeing none, we have uh, items 7A through D. Happy to uh, entertain a motion for all, the, all of those or individually. So moved. And motion is for 7A through D, Mr. Gerson? Yes. Second. Second by Mr. Scribble. Discussion? Um, so everybody's clear. Um, uh, item B, as in Baker, is uh, going to be uh, Wendy Sweet will be standing in for the uh, re rescind re re rescinding the appointment for Jennifer Derrick. Uh, so Miss Derrick actually never, never even took the spot, right, Mr. Hurley? That's a personnel related issue, so uh, we'd have to go into an executive session to discuss yeah. that. And then uh, item C, uh, we have the resignation of our access coordinator. And uh, <coughs> item D uh, pretty much spells it out there. Any questions on any, any of those? All good? Roll call vote? Roll call? Yes, please. Mr. Durso? Yes. Mr. Strobel? Yes. Mr. B. Scott? Yes. Mr. Wolf? Yes. Mr. J. Scott? Yes. Ms. Olson? Yes. Mr. Rafka? Yes. Mr. Passes so there. Okay. Any presentations by public on issues? <laughs> well, then we'll adjourn and go right into the community hall. So, adjourn that. Home. We've already done roll call. Actually, I'm sorry, we haven't done pledge. We'll do roll call again, please, Mr. Wolf. Yes, Mr. Rector. Mr. Durso? Here. Mr. Strobel? Here. Mr. B. Scott? Here. Mr. Wolf here. Mr. J. Scott? Here. Ms. Olson? Here. Mr. Rapka? Here. Seven members of the form. Procedures for public participation have not changed in the past three minutes. They're still the same. Uh, are there any agenda edits by board members? <coughs> Seeing none, uh, there will be an executive session following this to discuss personnel and negotiation items. Uh, Mr. Hurley, take it away with superintendent's report, please. Uh, yes, I'd like to uh, personally and publicly thank uh, Books A Million, which is a bookstore, uh, for their donation of over $1,200 of books to the Daniel Boone Area School District. I'll uh, try to give you an idea of how this kind of played out. Basically, they came to us. Um, they asked us for a list of books that we would be interested in. Um, our reading teachers provided us with a list of books, and people who went into the store had the opportunity to purchase 
they, along with whatever else they're purchasing, purchase a book for the Daniel Boone Area School District. So Books a Million kind of sponsored the whole thing and solicited the donations. Obviously, many of our community members and probably people outside of the community uh, bought a significant number of books. And um, as soon as you guys accept that, I'll be happy to uh, pass them out to our reading teachers so we'll put them to good use. Uh, the second thing I'd like to talk about is, and I'd like some input from the board on, uh, the Educational Foundation would like to have something they're calling a First Friday, and what they'd like to do before school starts, um, they would like to bring food trucks up to the high school in the parking lot um, for a donation, of course, and so before school starts where the kids can buy sandwiches, they can buy coffee, things of that nature. Um, the, this has the support of the administration. Um, it also has the support of our food service company. Um, and it also has support of the two kids I um, polled in formally thought it'd be really cool to do uh, every Friday. Um, wheel them in and they can get coffee and things like that. What's the statistical variance on the, on the two, two kids? <laughs> So anyway, um, like to get some board input on that. If it's, I think it would be something neat we could do for the kids. Certainly, it would be something from a morale standpoint for the kids. I think it would be cool. Um, the basically, my understanding from talking to our food service, uh, the impact of them will be negligible. I mean, it actually may help them because they can set up their own truck out there, and they're getting about 20 breakfasts a day at the high school. So they're not getting that many students anyway. So this may actually help their numbers, not harm their numbers. The record will show that Mr. Miller joined yeah. at 736. We're not that far into it yet in terms of that, but obviously we'll have the area cordoned off. Yeah, I also assume there'll be staff present. Uh, yeah, we'll put some people out there. That won't be a problem. I mean, my only concern was to make sure that our partners and food service were okay with it, and it sounds like we're, we're good there, so um, any other board concerns, questions? Yeah, I, I, think, I think we're safe to move forward here, so. Excellent. Thank you. That's all I have for you. Any public comment? Right. Well, that will move to uh, our finance items. Uh, you have the tax, tax exonerations and some items with River Rock, um, as well as a, uh, we've already had a discussion where we've already, we're informed about the book donation and then the uh, PTC uh, donation. Uh, so I, I had, uh, on item C then, my, my assumption with the, with the nine uh, reservations, uh, and I don't think we have an issue with being the nine, unfortunately. Um, but I assume if we're less than nine, we still pay for nine. Yes, that would be correct. And we did research um, the kids are there right now currently as well as um, also hit the historical data on that. And we're not going below nine on any days. I'm very confident of that based on our historical data. So basically, if we'd be saving $30 um, a day per student, and you can do the quick math, and, and it's like 40-some thousand dollars over their standard um, rate. That's just quick math. Any other board um, questions and any other any of the items under finance? Hearing none, uh, public comment on our finance items. All right, we'll move to uh, programs. Um, numerous uh, uh, field trips or in overnights, and which is actually my question. Um, so for a few of these, like Boyertown, would we still do an overnight trip for that? That would seem to be a trip where we be a day trip, I mean, you know, back and forth. I mean, by the time you find a hotel in Boyertown, it might be even closer to, <laughs> than, to, to go back. To, there was Boyertown, I think. I, I think Conrad Weiser was another one. I mean, yeah, that's, that's obviously so farther. But. So I guess my question is, can we just go through these and make sure they're truly overnight trips? I mean, unless there is. I mean, is there? There might be a valid reason why it is. I don't know, but I just thought I'd ask. 
we'll get back to you on that. Any other board <coughs> comments on our items under programs? Any public comment? All right, moving right along. Uh, the record will show. The record will show that Miss Albright joined at seven thirty-nine. Okay. Uh, any secretary's correspondence, Mr. Wolf? <coughs> Nothing, Mr. Rabbit. Okay. Uh, either item B uh, with the intermediate unit. Um, obviously, the, the, the big thing which we've already heard a little bit about is the new Crisis Go app that um, is being tested and finalized. Um, and just so everybody's aware, uh, the IU did spearhead that uh, with a, a grant from uh, Senator Schwank. Um, and uh, you know, collaboratively with uh, law enforcement as well as all the districts, and uh, it sounds like a really uh, great uh, program to provide parents with updates, uh, staff. Um, you know, my, my question was always, if there is an emergency, how do how do parents get get good information? Um, you know, I, I believe it also provides uh, maps to the to the police and whatnot for uh, they need to respond to the school. Um, so uh, the grant funding should cover, I believe, uh, two years of the cost. Um, and then the IU is, I think, optimistic that there might be some more money to secure out there, but. Uh, Irregardless, uh, if that money was not found, so obviously there is a cost to the program, uh, which my assumption would be we then uh, pass to the districts. Um, but I would, I would think, uh, I mean, just as a heads up, that this this app might at some point cost the district money. But I mean, I think it's money well spent. Um, so, um, and um, you know, we're. I mean, Burst County is pretty much a spearhead in this in this thing, and uh, we're on the ground here. So, uh, really, uh, I think outstanding stuff coming from the IU in that regards. So that was really the big one. Of, I think the big takeaway from our last meeting uh, in regards to to the IU. Um, any questions about that? Anything from the BCTC, Mr. Wolf? Yes, Mr. Rathbill. Um, just two, two, two things. Uh, the uh, JOC did enter an agreement with the uh, Education Association on a new contract um, that was um, approved by the JOC. The other item of interest was the JOC uh, recommended that they move forward with the design phase of uh, in the engineering of having a, a new building specifically dedicated to welding that would be constructed on the West Campus. Um, so the $60,000 that they uh, authorized for the engineering site preparation, all that, to, to commence. Um, we were looking at, initially they were looking at all the funding and several of us had a, a question that there was no project manager um, or a, um, I should say contractor or risk. So you're, you basically have a deadline to have this done by the, at the beginning of August, and the school the, the school would be basically uh, having no less than eight trades that would be on site, but no one would be doing any kind of project schedules or timelines. You know, making sure everybody's uh, getting in when they're supposed to, and the project's actually going to be completed on time. Because part of the justification for the project was the revenue for the students that are uh, adult students that are coming in for education, plus you're already committing to the high school um, sophomores that they're going to be en enrolled in that next class. And right now, um, they're, uh, they would be accepting enrollment to a welding class, anticipating that the building would be open and ready when they start uh, at the end of August. So um, um, I was among those that objected to moving forward without having uh, construction manager. So now they're going back to look at the uh, the engineering uh, engineering company who's doing it. They offer that service, and they were offering on a limited basis. But we wanted to understand and define what limited meant, because ultimately someone has to be responsible for making sure the project's done on schedule and on budget. And 
the school, your, your administrators are not in a position to, uh, you know, run as a construction manager in our. <coughs> so those are the only two things. But we didn't want to hold up the project, so we approved the engineering and site preparation um, paperwork. So that it's moving forward. Well, it, of course, you need uh, some lack of lack of moisture to get the site prepped, but probably even better. Well, it's, in, it's the, all the engineering design uh, that's permitting. All that's got to go first before you can start putting a shovel in the ground. Any questions for Mr. Wolf? Uh, I don't see any student board representatives today. Uh, Mr. Durso, anything from our legislative legislative folks? We got uh, something Oops. that uh, House Bill 2329 is a legislation to propose to set up 100% of residential properties and farms from taxation for schools to exclude. I think it's the same thing they try a lot, so we'll see where they go on that. Another thing being talked about just came up with the heat wave that we had uh, the first week of school, uh, Pennsylvania, and their education advocates are calling for state funding for school infrastructure upgrades. That'd be nice to get some of the projects we need to do. That'd be something that could fall into that. Um, that's about it. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Dresser? All right. Any other reports I missed? <coughs> Any public comments? All right. We want the personnel. Um, we have an extra crypto resignation. Uh, obviously, we've already dealt with B1A, um, and the, the reason I had that move from the, the Cal obviously was the we would meet before the September 21st deadline, so I wanted to get that taken care of. Um, and then we have some other appointments, volunteers, um, still working on our uh, administrative comp plan. I heard a sigh from, I think, uh, Mr. Scott next to me. Um, any, uh, any board questions on those items? Any public comment? All right. Under item 11, um, we have our, our student headcounts. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell Mr. Hurley, I'll stir the pot a little bit. Um, just, you know, to avoid any groans, I, 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 if you look at your student enrollment, um, you know, you'll, you'll see that first grade is not where we wanted it to be. Um, in, theory, we, in theory, we could move a teacher out of kindergarten and still be well within our numbers. Um, just put it out there, and we do have a we did have a third grade teacher resignation, which we have not filled. Uh, we do need to hire for that spot. Um, if we didn't hire, we, we could move a teacher around and uh, still have enough teachers in our elementary to cover all our needs. Um, and if you're going to, I know we need, it would disrupt some students in kindergarten, but we're going to be disrupting 20 some odd kids anyway in third grade with a new teacher. So either way you look at it, kids will be getting a new teacher or something at some point. So just putting it out there for his food for thought. Uh, any board comments on the moment? Public comment? Uh, a curriculum instruction meeting happened earlier today at a very speedy pace. Uh, Mrs. Olson, anything to uh, share with the board? Uh, yes, it's Brown Gibb. Um, we talked about um, the school report card that we're going to be getting from the Department of Ed in the state. Um, it should be out sometime in October. Um, we were preparing to uh, um, have a presentation at the, at the uh, C&I committee meeting in November because we probably won't have it by the time we have our meeting in October. Is, um, that, a, is that a meeting you'd like to see uh, a good number of the board at? Is that a... Um, we'll, once we see what our report card looks like, we can decide if we want to have a large um, a large presentation at C&I and a smaller one at the, at the C, at the CAL right afterwards, or if you want to just have everybody come okay. to it, we can decide. 
decide what we know and how um, much detail we need to drill down to, I guess. Um, 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 we, we had a very high level uh, discussion about the possibility of um, maybe um, putting together some, uh, some sort of uh, resources and programs in for parents to help them, um, especially at the elementary level, um, to understand um, some of the common core requirements. We haven't done that in a while. It's been probably uh, eight, eight years or so since we've, we've done that. So we were talking about maybe doing that again um, in, very, in very broad strokes. Um, uh, curriculum cycle, um, the curriculum is um, we, we like to look at the, look at the curriculum um, every six years um, on a rolling basis that we, that's kind of fallen away last uh, several years. And uh, so uh, Dr. Sincerfino is going to start working on um, what that cycle is going to look like, you know, developing each discipline from K through 12. Um, on a stagger um, to get it all to get everything to get everything looked at all the way from kindergarten to twelfth grade at least once every six years. Um, yeah, induction for new teachers um, it is required. We've already approved their mentors. Um, there, um, we talked about some of the requirements that are required by the state versus um, some of the additional things that we do on the on the. Um, school and um, building level um, and what that program looks like. Um, Dr. Sensorfin would like to have that be um, a little bit more um, structured um, from year to year. Um, and uh, that is also in process. Talk about the opening and service um, programs we had um, and how we had Tom Warner here talking about um, how to uh, talk to teachers about how to avoid pitfalls um, re um, regarding uh, special education designations and things like that, um, and working with the high school teachers specifically about the iPads, maybe um, separating teachers into groups of folks that were um, felt like newbies and people that felt like they were a little bit more experienced. And, um, so you, you had, um, instead of teaching, talking to everybody at one level, they were able to uh, get a little further um, by separating people by where they felt their comfort level was. And uh, then teachers uh, did breakouts with their grade levels, um, board department chairs, worked on lesson planning. Um, and it sounded like um, in-services went well. We, did, uh, we didn't talk much about the iPads, because um, you're going to hear about that from um, Mr. Miller from the Technology Committee. We talked about that more in depth in that, in that meeting. And our next meeting is sometime in October. It is October 8th, 6 o'clock. Well, sounds like you jammed a lot into a short one. <laughs> yes. Um, so Any, between Mr. Miller, Miller and, and C&I, I mean, is there a kind of like a plan update at some point as to what curriculum has made its way over to the to the iPads or what you know that was more a discussion we had at the very beginnings of that conversation I think that, that uh, Mr. Miller can speak a little bit more to that we did discuss that in technology we very 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 briefly it's just beginning uh, I think that's something that we have to yeah and, 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 and maybe uh, at a some point maybe in, I don't know couple months down the road we can get a little update so that we know how it's progressing. Yeah. Yes, uh, yeah we, we definitely will and it, I, I think it's mixed at, at this point. I was just at the open house and they great by the way. There's a lot of the legal parking going on. <laughs> but yeah, there, there's uh, what I saw from just from the, the use of the iPads from a couple of people I saw I, I thought they were incorporating into the, the work already. I, I thought they were doing well. I know I've heard some mixed stories but, but what I've seen it, it, it looked promising. Yeah. Any other questions from Mrs. Olson? Yeah. Um, so in that same vein, are we, aside from just the uh, iPad curriculum, are we, are we going to see, or have you seen a more broader plan for curriculum across elementary, middle school, and high school? That was the discussion that um, um, Dr. Sincerfino said that, you know, that it, 
it needs to happen. It's it's not going to happen for all grades all at once. But we need that she she's she's identified that as um, as a priority for her to um, get more more time more time and resources into into unless you are you talking to you specifically about stuff electronically on the iPad or you're talking K no, twelve. No, I just meant like. You think we're like meshing our, our well, K through 12, is that what you're? No, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm, there was a, an entire year last year that I thought we were developing a, a new curriculum or a change the curriculum for the elementary schools. Um, there was some, what I, what I understood before was that there was some, um, at least some testing around data for the, 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 the fifth grade that was in Birdsboro last year. And we were going to see some type of. Well, I mean, I don't want to put words in Dr. C's mouth, but I mean, she she did little her own little trial experiment over there. I'll, I'll say, Dr. C, yeah, and which which word. she was hoping to kind of bring to the other uh, kid, you know, K through five experience. Um, I, I think probably Dr. C would need if you look at that specific question. I think you know she'd probably just need to have a little presentation on that. Unless you wanted to stand up and go right now. <laughs> All right, right now, it'll um, work. Yeah, we did um, some intervention work with kids at first row last year based on our preliminary PSC results. It looks like it was beneficial to kids. Um, I know that we started the year with 15 of those kids who were basic, and it would be very really five of them who were basic, and one of those five was a student who was done the whole year in truancy program. So that would be good school to, to learn. So, um, so I think we were very successful in moving kids. I'm looking forward to our growth data. We don't have that data yet, but I know that um, Megan and Molly have both built uh, solid intervention blocks into both their and the charts and the time. Um, kind of looking to replicate what we did there. So you know, on a surface level, it looks like it was very successful to have kids every day be getting some time on their instructional level with the teacher um, for anywhere from 20 to 60 minutes of that time. So. And I guess, is there, is there a, is there a long-term plan for curriculum in the elementary levels? So that was what we were talking about tonight. What we don't have right now is a functioning curriculum cycle, and that's a K-12 piece, it's not just a K-12 five piece or a K to eight piece or it's a K to twelve piece. Um, we know that social studies was the last thing that was partly done, um, but it's not finished and so we know that that has to be finished. But in a curriculum cycle what you do is every six years you get your hands on a whole curriculum K to twelve. You don't kind of want to look at curriculum in a piecemeal fashion. You need it to make sense longitudinally um, K to twelve. So that needs to be done, and we know that that needs to be done, and so that's something that we're going to start making sure we have Yeah, I guess I'm thinking, I know since I've been on the board, the focus has been on the curriculum at the high school, and I know if there's a, if there's a requirement that says we have to come up with it every six years, we have to look at our K-12 plan, I think that's great, but what are we doing about our K-5 plan and our six to eight plan in between those six year requirement required studies. You, you would do any curriculum as a K to twelve. You wouldn't do it just in piecemeal. So if we looked at social studies, we would look at it as a K to twelve picture so that kids have an experience in social studies from kindergarten to twelfth grade that makes sense, it doesn't necessarily repeat itself, it's standards based. Right. No, I think that makes absolute sense. But like I said, I, my own observation has been, and I don't know if anyone feels differently, but um, most of the conversations I've heard about curriculum have been at the high school and not at the K to 12. So I'm just trying to understand. Is there, um, in keeping with um, wanting to look at it holistically, uh, well, not holistically, but from um, from K to 12 in each discipline, is there a specific discipline that you're asking that maybe we could we could attack first um, beyond um, <coughs> social studies? And I, I guess in keeping with what um, Dr. C is saying, is best practices 
if there is a specific thing like like math or yeah, or reading that you're that you're looking at and thinking maybe we should attack that sooner rather than later. I mean, I'm that, not could be, that could be that could be a way. To, <laughs> I'm, I'm, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I do. I, I'm not. Yeah, you know, obviously, I'm not an educator, but I would think that given what I heightened understand that social studies would be the last on the list of things. And it reading, just so happens that that's the one that Reading and math started. and science might be a little higher on the list. I understand um, what you're saying. It's just that, that because of the fact that that one that was already started but completed, it does make sense to just finish it. I know last yeah. year we had conversations around the schools uh, doing their, their the various testings differently and there was an issue there, has that been rectified? I know that um, we had, you know, vast differences in our scores from last year. What are we doing about that to provide, now that they're all in one school, we were led to believe that that was gonna make things easier and improve things, so is that, what, what are we, they're not just gonna improve because we put them all in one building, they're gonna improve because we put them all in one building and we've taken advantage of the fact that they're all in one building and we're doing something about it. And, and cur curriculum, uh, in someone, over there, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, standardized testing and curriculum, you know, are two different things that we need to attack. They're not really the same. No, I agree. Um, I, if that's wrong, you can correct me. I can ask a little bit of information for you. The re one of the reasons why she was talking about social studies is because during the last five years, there's been work on the math curriculum, the ELA curriculum, and the science curriculum. Um, in fact, you guys bought a significant amount of um, the FOSS kits um, about a year ago. That was you guys spent about a hundred thousand dollars on that, I believe. So um, that's one of the reasons why she was talking about social studies because the, the, it barely got started that that particular piece uh, of that. There's by the way, there's still some work um, because. We're now about three to four years away from the math. One of the things you want to do is you want to look at your assessment results, and then you want to take a look back at the curriculum and say, okay, how, how did it line up and where our gaps are? So you need to touch back at the curriculums once you get out a year or two years, because now you have assessment data that says, well, there might be gaps here. Aren't, aren't they teaching? Maybe we need to spend more time on these things. Uh, and that, that's how we kind of go through a curriculum cycle. Once what we, I think uh, Dr. C is talking about is we want to continue um, continue this process and we want to get to social studies, which really hasn't been touched at all. I guess, you know, I, I don't want to belabor the point. I guess what I'm saying is that our first priority is to educate the kids. And all we talk about is budget, and which, which is really important. But when we have, we should at some point see a plan. Like, what's the plan? We're, we're, we're doing a budget that's a plan. All we talk about is planning the budget, planning. What are we doing to plan around the curriculum? What are we doing well, to plan? I, I, I think that the, you're talking about the same thing. I think the, the budget over the past several years kind of dictated that we kind of put a hold on all our planning when it came to, to curriculum. And we've been trying to catch up. We've been you know, putting out fires instead of having a comprehensive plan like we should have had years ago, but stuff was put on hold. Well, is that why we didn't hire the director of curriculum? Was to, to well, that's actually, what we're doing now. Right? And that's why I'm asking, why, when are we going to see a plan? You had if talked it's not happening here, I'm assuming it's happening in your yeah. committee, and that's why I'm asking. You, you, were, you had mentioned about the, some methodology they changed for the scores that made the scores different. Yeah, what I yeah, understood yeah. is, and, and Dr. C, Dr. C explained that to us. I yeah, that, we, that basically we spent a lot of time teaching to the to what the test was going to require them to know instead of teaching them you know the normal curriculum and not spending so much time preparing for the test. Which all right, maybe they learned more about the things they should learn, but they kind of their test scores suffered um, from standardized testing. Is that is that correct? I think I think we're all kind of talking about the same thing. Okay. Um, so we have talked a lot about adding courses at high school, which is adding a course. It's not necessarily changing the curriculum. We've talked a lot about iPads and how they support instruction at high school. That's not really a curriculum. It's a tool to deliver content. Um, so it's different. Um, so the broader concept of what are we teaching, when are we teaching, and how is it related to the standards? Um, and that's developing curriculum. So the difference in what we did last year at Birthboro was not a change in curriculum, it just was a change in are we giving kids what they need instructionally in that moment every day. So 
it's just a different way of delivering instruction. And so, you know, we do have some walkthroughs and um, both principal walkthroughs and assistant principal walkthroughs to kind of get to that instructional piece, which is one piece of what we do every day of teaching and learning. And then, but you've got to have a roadmap, and your curriculum is your roadmap. And then, historically, my understanding is, is that the roadmap got put kind of on hold as a result of the budgeting pieces. So, Mr. Afghan, you're right. Um, and so now it's just time to like redraw the roadmap. And you can't leave something sit for another six years that was partly done. You've got to finish that. And you do have to keep coming back. And we've had several conversations around math in particular. Do we need to come back to that? And what's going on and why? Why does the data kind of look like nothing's going on in math and we know that it is? So those conversations have to be cyclical, but they have to kind of happen in a way that's not hit or miss or, you'll, or we'll miss something. And just you know, well, before I forget, since we're early in the year, and if I'm incorrect on this, let me know. But I did you know, we put the band aid on our, our good math program for another year, so I'm hoping we'll have a recommendation for next year. Is that is that what we're looking at here? I think we the go math, the, the license is for three years. Is it a three? Years? It's a three years. Okay. Um, if you remember, the discount that they gave us was substantial. It was almost it ended up costing us like five. That if we got a one-year license, okay. it was like five thousand dollars. I, 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 I must misremember. Mis yeah. mis I thought yeah. it was only one year. Okay, so we're, we're right. good with that for a couple of months. So, yeah. so the whole boomer. When will we see a plan? I mean, any an estimate, ETA. She's creating a, a curriculum, that's exactly what she's doing. She's creating a curriculum cycle for us to revisit the curriculum cycle. We've also got a data warehouse that's just putting the tools in the people's I, hands. I, 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 I just want to know, I, don't, I, could never, I couldn't begin to create such a plan, all right? However, I would like to see one, and I don't think we're asking a lot to say, when yeah. could we expect to see one? That's You're not, and the conversation was, um, was very much a preliminary conversation, and um, so hopefully we will have that answer for you soon. I don't know for you right now. I have a question. Stay yeah, tuned. We've had one in the past, and I don't. Like, I've never, I've never seen, seen one. Looks like, so I, I don't know what it looked like if you gave it to me. So, so I, I'd like to see one. Yeah. So I hope the rest of you feel the same way. Great. I don't yeah. know if that's if this in a plan format, or I, I'm not sure what it looks like. So. You're just you're looking for. Um, a schedule by which we um, a, we 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 attack each, each discipline over a six-year span, so that 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 is met, or you're looking to see what the curriculum is. High, high level. Where are where are our gaps? Okay. Where, where do we need to focus, and okay. and what are we doing about it? That's it. Right. I mean, it's you know the details will come, but I mean we I'd like to just acknowledge that there's we have we have. A direction that we're following and going after, and not just like I have to do this every six years. I had a question. We, we kind of glossed over an enrollment. I thought we'd talk about it here. Okay. Um, and maybe this isn't the place to talk about it. If you're right, be quiet and we'll talk about it another time. Okay. Um, we talked about we needed to hire or potentially hire a third grade teacher in the school year started. Where are we at in that process? Be really good to have teachers in place before school year. We, we had, it was a last second resignation. Um, that person, we are allowed to hold people um, by law, by Pennsylvania law, for a significant number of days, which we're doing until we hire the right person. Um, hiring teachers uh, is one of the most important, if not the most important thing that we do. So we, um, it's important that um, we properly vet the teachers through a rigorous uh, process, which we're doing right now. Um, we've advertised for it, we've taken applications for it, and we're interviewing. And so when we get the right candidate that suits the needs of the building, uh, we'll move forward with that and we'll release the current teacher and, and that's there right now, and then we'll, we'll bring the new person in. Uh, I have two, two questions about that. Um, obviously, we're, we're not going to just hold her as long as we're able to just because we're not happy with her leaving. We're Absolutely gonna, we're not. We're going to put somebody in place. I'm not suggesting yeah. anything. I'm just saying we're not going to keep her to the, the length as long as we can because that's going to be super disruptive for those kids. 
Now um, we're, we're doing what's in the best interest of kids. What we're doing is, is we're making sure we're hiring the right teacher, and then as we do with everyone, we, we try to do as fast as we can and make sure we get the right person in place, and then we release the teacher. This was sprung on us. Again, it was a last second resignation, uh, and so um, we, like all districts do, and people do it to us all the time also, when we take their candidates, um, we, we've, held, we've held that person in place for the interest of the kids. Um, because it's, you know, for obvious reasons. And then, um, will there be any transition days set forth, or are the kids going to come in one day and there's just another teacher? We'll transition that a day or two in there. We'll, we'll work that plan out with the building principal. Thank you. <clears throat> any other questions for Mrs. Alton? That will move to uh, facilities. Thank you, Mr. Radka. Um, oh, actually, I'm sorry. Any public comment? I, I glazed over that. Okay. Now. <laughs> we, uh, we did have a, a meeting August 27th, um, and um, Mr. Uh, uh, Blankenbiller gave us an update on um, some of the status of our buildings. Uh, obviously, uh, there are a lot of shortcomings with uh, GCH progress over the summer. Um, I don't want to belabor that too much. Um, also, um, got an update on the high school uh, entrance redo, uh, reconfiguration, which was all but complete. I think they just had some ceiling tower, minor things to be finished uh, uh, while we had uh, our meeting. So uh, beyond that, there's some uh, other projects that we, we started discussing uh, preliminarily. Uh, and uh, some ongoing maintenance needs, but nothing has really jumped out. Any questions for Mr. Wolf? Uh, yeah, I, I do. I saw Mr. Hurley's report again this week. We had items from issues at the high school facilities. Are we doing anything to address the lack of performance? Well, we uh, can notify their management of their deficiencies. Um, Mr. Blankenbiller has, uh, on repeated occasions, email the list of uh, things that are deficient, as you see for uh, both uh, you know, the vice Mr. Uh, um, the vice principal at the high school, Mr. Spores, um, had a very lengthy list of deficiencies, including a locker room that hadn't been cleaned out since the football game the prior. So um, it's continuing on with the GT GCA's normal performance. Basically, we're just going to have to recruit and not have to close for some services. They're not going to listen. They haven't listened, so it's time to be more proactive. So the board needs to have that in mind that that discussion and that vote is going to be coming sooner than later. That's what's going to have to happen with GCA. We're just going to have to get quotes. Hey, Mike, can we, we, we talk to Brian about you know instead of these one-off scenarios, just start streamlining that process? Like, hey, look, you got 30 days to get this right, or we're going outside. And you're going to pay for it. Well, we always have that capability for non-performance. Um, you know, uh, Mr. Small, I'm sure, can provide an update if they don't do their, um, what we've asked. We, we do have that right to hire another company and deduct that cost from their contract. But Mr. Small, if you can elaborate on that. Mr. Sumer will be speaking to the board in two weeks. But what do you mean? I mean, we, uh, we did have a uh, small discussion uh, about, you know, what we would like is, uh, for instance, um, one of the things I was not comfortable with initially with going to GCA is I wanted to retain the maintenance, maintenance folks because we've never really had anyone that GCA supplied that really is qualified for, for the position they've held. And uh, we had well, at least one instance where they charged the district for a maintenance person who was actually a clerical person. So, I mean, one of the things that I think we, you know, in my recommendation, we were going to have continuing discussions on this is uh, that we would uh, entertain having our own <coughs> staff as district employees so we could actually get uh, folks that are, un that are knowledgeable, uh, have, the, uh, have the right skills for the right job, and we're not treating, you know, we don't have carpenters trying to do electrical work. It's some of the stuff that we've experienced. So, 
Um, we'll, we'll have more discussions on that. I believe Mr. Small is working on both the, the current contract enforcement as well as getting our, yeah. our bids ready for the next uh, go around. So, right. Yeah. We'll be going out to uh, advertising that. So, um, again, a lot more to talk about that as we move forward. Any public comment? All right. Uh, Mr. Wolf, staying with you, finance. Yes, the finance meet, uh, committee met tonight. Um, Ms. Haynes uh, provided us an update uh, for the Act 1 budget uh, cycle. Um, I see that I asked her and she similarly uh, sent it to everyone um, so you can see the timeline um, of the budget process. Uh, and we have to make our decision on what we're going to do for Act 1 um, um, after, in the new year. So we'll be working on that. Um, so take a minute and review that. Uh, she gave us an update on the, the PNC card procurement um, that we use our credit cards to purchase uh, a lot of uh, materials. Uh, I know, I think it was $15,000 last, uh, two years ago, $11,000 last year for money we got back for like the roof project for the high school. I know they charged that to the credit card. So, I mean, that's just money that comes right back into the general fund. So, earn cash back. Um, she had uh, made some changes to that uh, to try and maximize uh, our return. She's looking uh, uh, further at that. Um, Maybe we could use some of the uh, hotel points for the overnights. No? Thank you for that. Uh, question. I'm not sure how to answer that. Who's going to tell me? Sorry. Of course, we got the um, update on Skyward. This is uh, Tane's uh, favorite project uh, that we've all come to know and love almost as much as she does. She's very excited about that. Uh, did you say it's going to be the beginning of the year or be? Yeah, January 1st. We go live January 1st. Okay, so January 1st yes. is implemented. In uh, that and that's when the Terminator comes down and takes over. Absolutely. That's when you start thinking and look at this uh, As you move forward, not with this budget cycle, but uh, the next budget cycle, um, Ms. Haynes did say that the um, administrators are going to be entering their information into um, this program, documenting, for instance, uh, if you're going to display breakout. I use the sports as an, as a, as an example. Um, if, if you're for volleyball, you know, here's the coaches, the assistant coaches, the, you know, whatever the, the officials are, transportation, all that would be itemized. So we wouldn't be, um, you know, as far as all the other administrators for the other buildings, you're going to do the same thing for supplies and so forth. So we won't be sitting here in April and May, you know, asking for the, the backup on what the what these idle items actually uh, entail. So we'll already have that information. So we'll we, we, we shall we shall see. We shall yeah. see. Right. So it won't be this no, it won't be. It won't. Since the <laughs> program starting in January, this one this would start with uh, yeah. oh, twenty twenty one. I mean, I, I thought we were going to be getting ready ahead of it. Uh, Scott gave it December tenth to allow the fiscal to get ready for January one, but I thought we were going to just start using it for budgeting before then. <clears throat> this thing uh, is it possible? For that, for Skyward to be used in this budget cycle. That was Mr. Miller's question. Yes, I'm going to actually be loading the information in myself in the Skyward because it has to be there. Because yes. as we go live January 1st, then I have to have a budget in there. That's good. So I will be looking at all the budgets coming through. Now that we've got the accounting straight, I feel very confident that you'll come with information even this year. You'll definitely. No, it's okay, so, so, but you're going to be doing the, the entry instead of the other administrator. I have to. Software. Yeah, I have to. I have to enter at this time because there's no way they're going to have that at that kind of time to be trained and then upload it in. So I'm going to put it in this year because it's not going to start until January 1st. Well, it has to be January 1st because of the taxes and all that. Yeah, for the payroll. Correct. So we'll be able to get actuals that we can compare to plan. <coughs> Yep. Well, it's going to be what, what they've submitted, the detail that they submit, and the Saints putting it in there. So that naturally will be 
I would think, generating a lot of questions and, and dialogue between the administrators and Ms. Haynes and her folks. Uh, lastly, um, Ms. Haynes provided us an update. The update is, I mean, the audit, excuse me, has, uh, has begun, so uh, we'll have more on that. Um, I think anything you want to say real briefly about that? Uh, just, just started. No, it just it actually just started, but it's a lot smoother than it was last year. They walked in, they got the financials right when they walked in the door, which is a lot better than last year. Mike, I do have a question in regards to the question. Last year when we were discussing a lot of the budget type of information, we were told that so the administrators weren't adept at that particular area um, creating that budget. And so having the information for us is good, but is there any plan somewhere, or not who I would ask that question of, to help coach the, the administrators as they present, provide these budgets so that we can get something early that's not so fluffed up like we had dealt with last time. And then our task was to try and find where that pepper was, pull it out. And so is there any plan around that, anybody, anywhere to try and sit down as they create these budgets to get some coaching? Because that was, that was the crux last year, where they don't think they don't, that, that they're not adept in that area. That's what I heard. Okay. Well, from the training side of using Skyward, they will, the same said, there will be training for the administrators on how to, to use Skyward to enter their information when they do that. Now this budget cycle, uh, you can elaborate how they're submitting it to you. Um, again, it's gonna be a lot of the same information, but it, that's where the questions are gonna come because now you're plugging in, in data, like what, what is this number, what it, can, what it consists of, and I'm sure Skyward breaks it down. So as you plug it in, so we were talking about zero up versus that's more of a, this plus three yeah, I'm thinking like next year, next the zero year. base, because they're going to be entering it straight in. Okay. They're going to have to enter in the this line year won't be in the zero. This year, we're going to have to compare to what we have, of what I've done is I've, because I've updated the budget, revised budget, did all the transfers, made sure that the account structure is the way that it should be. What they're comparing to is going to be a lot more legitimate. Okay than what they had in the past. So it's still, even though we're not going to be totally there, we're going to be very, very close. A lot better than we were last year. You have to start with a bad budget, you're going to always budget from a bad budget. And well, it never we, ends. That's the point last year. What you're getting at, though, is it's not just training on how to use the, the, the tool, but also as a district, how what's our approach, how we want them to enter the data, what, they, what we want them to capture. Right? right, I want them to build from the ground up. Yeah. So when well, we, we were six ten number, they're going to be actually entering the line items. What makes up that budget? I mean, we we were told last year that some of this training was was taking place. So I don't know. I mean, that was Mr. Harris said that some of that training took place. I don't know. Um, but also, you know, going forward, we will have a new superintendent. So you know, that superintendent will also, you know, uh, see what he or she, what their, you know. I wanted to philosophy sure is as far as you know. get zero up this year. So this budget coming is not going to be the ultimate goal. It's going to be better, but it's not going to be zero up where every line is put in and then you can build from it. That makes it a lot easier from our perspective when we take a look at it. Like, you know. Yeah, I'm not quite sure I understand why I cannot express it. I mean, they don't know how to use the tool, but they've been training the budget process, they can provide the numbers, and some of them can put in the tool for them. That's what I'm going to be doing. Like each of the numbers, I'm going to be meeting with the administrators this year. Okay. When they submit their budget to me, I'm going to question the line items as I'm putting it in. I know that a lot of them already supply the data that I can start putting the information and then question it. Whereas I didn't have the time last year, I'm going to have more time this year to devote to that because we did hire the business manager. Yeah, we want to get a jump on this on the cycle this year. You know, with the new board being seated last year. The committees were formed in December. We really only started in January. So now, now really, we'd like to start that process starting the next month in, in November, especially. And I can see things. It, it looks good. I'm looking forward. My plan, I'm actually I'm not behind on anything. Things are progressing a lot faster than I thought they would. I think we're in good shape to have make that happen. Yeah, I think they would start building from the bottom up this year, and it's a refinement the process as we learn how to use the tool. It's just not taking last year's budget. And they wouldn't because I'm not giving that to them. 
And yeah, one more thing. thing. Um, Ms. Haynes uh, said we're capturing $457,000 worth of access money, which will be moved to the general fund. Um, for those of you who are not sure what access money it is, it's a special, a special education expenses that we've already paid uh, over the years and have submitted for reimbursement. Um, <coughs> so that, that money, is sit, it's, as I understand it, it sits in a it sits in a fund in the state at zero percent, so we're pulling it into the district uh, uh, to at least get some interest on it. So, so anyway, that's four hundred fifty thousand to start the year that we weren't planning on having. Any other questions? That's, that, that's it. That concludes my report. Is that access money then? Sit in there, can we turn around and use that for special ed in the next year? So we'll, have that money. well, so it, it, it's, it's, yeah, so it, we've already spent that money ourselves. Right. We're getting it back, so it goes <clears> in the general <throat> fund. We could use it for whatever we want to use it for. And there's already money in the general fund, I mean, in the budget for special education that, that we know of you know, in, in, in case. And the, the, the reason did. why it was kind of off budget. Uh, for a while, um, and I won't go all through all the machinations, but um, there was a change in the vendor who used it. There was a backup for a while, and then we got more than we uh, should have gotten, and then we so we had to we had to uh, hold off for a little bit. And if I'm misspeaking at all, let, let me know. But I think that's kind of the gist of it. So that money, we we knew the money was there, but we weren't sure when we were going to be able to get that. So it been kind of off. Off the budget per se, right? So, is that any any, any incorrect uh, information there? No. Okay. So that's why it was brought on brought back on budget uh, now. So uh, there still is some more out there that potentially we, we could get. Was it make another, about 150? Yeah, I think they're sitting at 652 or something like that up there, and we're taking 457. Yeah. So uh, you know, if we get the proper special education billing out, billing out there, we could potentially get some more. So, so money can be used, right? I have a swamp work, so I can make sure you get it back. Any other questions, Mr. Wolf? Public comment? Mr. Scott, policy? Um, we have five policies up to first reading. Encourage all the board members to take a look. If you have any uh, concerns, let me know. We'll bring them up at the, at the meeting. I'll see what credit card usage it means for a hotel. I'm trying to see a little bit. Can be on the um, next meeting the 24th. Well, we, we we could certainly <laughs> join a nice. join a loyalty program and. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it could. That could be a night yeah. or two. Um, any board questions, Mr. Scott, and any of the <coughs> solicited policies? That was a terrific report. Details. <laughs> <laughs> Public comment. <laughs> Mr. Miller, technology. Uh, yes, we met on September the fourth. The main topic that we covered was one-on-one -on -one rollout uh, at the beginning of the school year. It went uh, well. No major surprises. I mean, there were a couple of glitches with uh, performance, uh, I think, in an area here and there, and uh, there were some issues with initially downloading some of the applications, so some minor issues, but overall, no major surprises, and I think it went as well as we expected. And actually, the, the rollout of the iPads to the students went quicker than planned, so I think that was a lesson learned for next year. That, uh, you don't need to allocate as much time as uh, they were passing out of distributors. Has uh, Mr. Matz reported any, any broken yet? No, not any broken so far that, that I'm aware of. Not as of the court. What's that? Not as of the court. Oh, yes. That's <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. As you said, apps loading was an issue, and, but it, it seems to be fine. It seems to be working itself out. I, I think overall network capacity was fine. Again, looking even tonight. The, the teachers using the iPads that didn't seem to be working well. 
didn't seem to have any capacity problems. Uh, the, uh, another one of the, the benefits of this is we no longer have any personal devices connected to our network. Now that students have iPads, there's no reason to connect personal devices. Well, there's, that's the difference between no reason and actually none being connected. That's uh... I mean, they're, they're not connected. Ah, okay. <laughs> they haven't found a workaround yet? I'm not done aware. Anything else, Mr. Uh, well, the online payment was the one issue that uh, it's been a challenge. Um, it wasn't in place as of the fourth. Uh, we have insurance. Uh, it's been suspended. I believe Mrs. First. Payne said it's still tied up in legal. Is that it? It is tied up in legal. It's the last that we heard. Uh, if it was at the end of this week, I, I think uh, Scott was planning on an alternative, maybe not using the school bus, but he was hoping that we could get to legal. Told us tonight at the high school that um, they were just taking checks. Yeah, so got to the point where we could not get through the fees. Right. Already. Yeah. Um, That's for the insurance. Financial system, as I said, I got it before they were going live on the 10th of December. Is the target date for go live is <coughs> to be in place for January 1. Data warehouse is the basic staff is trained and up and running using the data cleanup is the only thing that remains. He introduced the digital docu document storage as something we're going to start investigating, um, looking at it in October. That's something that we have on the calendar to take a look at in the future. And the, the big item that's coming up is looking to replace the student information system. Starting to look at evaluations, but the current system is old, uh, its uh, support is not good. Uh, PCIU is actually looking at another vendor. Um, I believe it's uh, supporting Infinite Campus. And also, Skyward has a tool that, that could obviously integrate with the rest of our package. So, so I've already got a price quote for you. Perhaps a, a, a discount would be yeah. a discount. Yeah. Yeah. I've already got a price quote for you. Already That'd be a discount. <laughs> Question. You're a little um, slow on the episode. So, are they able to use the iPads for, for testing? And things like that? Well, if I'm doing a math exam, I can use that and do it around them. Absolutely. As far as I understand, they can. Yeah. Uh, I, I've heard already, as far as chemistry, using it for labs, they've used it already yeah. too far for okay. lab work. And does that integrate with our you know, grade reporting? Yeah, it does. Yeah. 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 And that's something that's going to be coming up in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. 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 But they can do certain things in school and not all of them. They can do Google and they can do Google testing and they can integrate them in the center. There's lots of things. Just stay in your, in your, your, your that's, that's no longer your, your realm. If you're, you're, no. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Any, any questions for Mr. Miller? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Any public comment? Uh, Mrs. Albright, I don't believe we've actually had a transportation. Well, there's been some issues getting everyone together. Uh, we are meeting uh, Monday, yes. September 17th. So October 15th is when not I correct. We're going to do a, publicly do a cartwheel. Mr. B. Scott shows up to the meeting. I could never do Wednesdays, ever. Well, for the next three months, we're going to be Monday. All right, I'll be there. I'll bring my uh, first aid kit. I look we'll forward to seeing you. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> however, the good news about not meeting until now is we're going to be able to discuss all the things that went correctly and differently with my next year. Well, I, I, I do believe a, a, a thank you should go out to everybody who pitched in uh, in the absence of Mr. Belfer. So, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, Honestly, I haven't heard too many issues. I haven't gotten so. too many emails. Yeah, so that's, yeah, thank really? you. I got last year. Yeah. Who, who, uh, who st stepped in for that early round? Joelle did a good job. So, yeah. so yeah. yeah. Okay. I need to be removed from the transportation committee because I can never make mistakes. <laughs> 
So either <laughs> remove these so you don't hurt the you, you have to find your, you you have to find your replacement. To find your replacement. I, I bet you can get someone to switch off the policy. Can I switch off policy? Can you send Can you send Dexter? Uh, he doesn't want to go either. He's got to be with me. There's a line just to get off yeah. that committee. It has nothing to do with the committee. It's just I don't have, my Monday nights are tied up, and then when they had it on Wednesday, that was my only other night of the week that I, I have class on Tuesday and Thursday nights. I have no night. Policy meetings are on Mondays. You can't do Which Mondays. Which means I'll miss it because oh, I'm already at facilities. Oh, that's right. And then I got to go to other meetings on other Mondays. So your facility meetings, yeah, your, your facility meetings are yeah, well, the, the night of the cow. Ours are at the night of the very. I'm just saying, I'm killing the corn. So yeah, transportation is more of an ad hoc. Yeah. 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 Any other questions for Mrs. Albright besides complaints? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Saturday at noon. <laughs> Any public comment? Uh, old business, we have the uh, voting meeting, and I believe Mr. Schrebel has something for that. I was just wondering where we were um, with BEC and the repair estimate from Thompson, just kind of, just kind of sitting. I haven't heard anything. I, the last meeting that we had where we had three station, um, I was under the impression that I had given them my information. I, was, I don't know where we are. Has anybody got received anything? Good question. Um, the, the, the portion of the one portion of the building we were hoping to get repaired before winter came so there would be less expansion. Well, I, I think the last time we were <clears throat> kind of hemming and hawing about maybe putting the bid out for spring. He was going to get the information. There was just one area in question. Right. Like the well, we, we were hoping to grab a ladder and throw you up there. <laughs> okay. Well, the bid's supposed to go out in the summer. Which one did you put in the bus? See which one throws first. <laughs> Uh, anybody from administration have any input there? We'll reach out to them and find out what's going on. I'm not sure of the protocol, that's why I'm asking. You know. This is the protocol. This here just happened. Yeah. Got it. Rob's going to call him uh, Any other old business? <clears throat> any public comment? Any new business from board members? None. Any presentations by public on any items whatsoever? All right. I'll take a motion to adjourn it. Mr. Dorso and Mr. J. Scott.